good day. I'm Chamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, November 24. Government has signed three air services agreements with the Czech Republic, Turkey and New Zealand, allowing for scheduled and possibly non-scheduled air services between Jamaica and these countries. The agreements were signed on November 19 in Bali, Indonesia, during the International Civil Aviation Organization's Air Navigation Conference. Jamaica's delegation to the conference was led by Ambassador to Japan, His Excellency Ricardo Alicock, and included representatives from the Ministry of Transport, the Attorney General's Chambers, and the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority. The parties also signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Qatar, which will now make it possible for Jamaica to sign a previously initialed air services agreement with that country. Meanwhile, discussions were also concluded with India, Sri Lanka, Burkina Faso, Austria, Kenya and Ethiopia for the development of air services agreements with those countries. Similar talks are to continue with Hungary, Poland, the Russian Federation and Ecuador. With three weeks to go before the December 15 start of the winter tourist season, Portfolio Minister Dr. Wickham McNeil says prospects for the season are positive based on travel reports. The minister recently attended the World Travel Market trade show in China, where he met with tourism partners from the United States and Canada. Based on those discussions, he says future bookings are very encouraging. Despite the harsh global economic environment and the threat of recession in certain parts of the world, especially in parts of Europe, things have been going well for our sector. And we expect this year to once again pass the two million visitor mark. Preliminary figures for stopover arrivals from January to mid-November 2014 are up by 4% compared to the same period for 2013. Minister McNeil was speaking at the just-concluded Tourism Outlook Seminar 2014 at the Montego Bay Convention Center. The Accident and Emergency Department at the Maypen Hospital has been upgraded and reopened to the public. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson was at Friday's reopening, which followed extensive renovations. And we will continue to make further investments in this region in both primary and secondary care. A new casualty department was constructed as well as a new covered waiting area at a cost of over $17 million. The roof of the operating theatre was repaired at a cost of $4 million, while $5.7 million was used to provide operating tables and deliver beds. Work was also done to upgrade the air conditioning system at a cost of $41 million. Identifying and preventing human trafficking is to be taught in local secondary schools. The Ministry of Justice has drafted a trafficking in persons curriculum that will be taught to students in grades 7 to 9. Portfolio Minister Mark Golding handed over the manuals to the Ministry of Education on Friday. He pointed out that global figures have estimated that 1.2 million children are trafficked each year across borders and within countries. The infusion of human trafficking into the secondary schools curriculum will ensure that over the next few years, every child who comes through the formal education system will be aware of the issue of human trafficking. This will substantially decrease their vulnerability. If we can strengthen our young people by appropriate information, then I believe that we will have made a valuable contribution to social capital and to the advancement of their lives and our country. And finally, persons with disabilities are being urged to register with the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities, JCPD, in order to obtain a number of benefits. There are benefits in terms of economic empowerment grants uh, that persons can get to start income generating projects. Um, currently of up to $150,000 for individuals and $400,000 for groups of persons with disabilities. Ms. Hendricks was speaking at a recent GIS think tank. She pointed out that persons could also get help with assistive aid devices and more. The JCPD is currently celebrating its 40th anniversary under the theme, Honoring the Past, Reshaping the Future. Disabilities Awareness Week will be celebrated from November 30 to December 7. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thank you for watching.